What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. In today's video, I want to talk about regression and player age within franchise mode within MLB The Show because this is a topic of discussion that comes up a lot and it is something that you certainly want to know the details about at least the general broad strokes of it whenever you're going into a franchise mode trying to build a team and trying to keep a team relevant within the mode. Like I said, this is something that I have conversations with my friends about all the time, and as somebody that is not familiar as much with actual real-life baseball, I look at this from a perspective of what is actually happening within the game. What is actually happening to my players? What is actually happening in terms of regression? What is happening in terms of their age within the game? And it is somewhat contradictory to what actually happens in real life Major League Baseball. One of the comments that I hear all the time about baseball is that players can play well into their late 30s and some players have even played into their 40s. It is much more common than other sports and that is certainly the case based on what I've seen based on even the players that are in the game as we speak there are a lot of very solid to elite older players within the game and that is certainly something that is more common likewise within the real MLB there are certain players that might come over from an international league like the big prospect for the Cubs who is not actually a Cub anymore in my franchise he got traded to the Angels but nonetheless he came over to Major League Baseball at 27 years of age. He actually played for quite a while over in the Japanese League, I guess, or something of that nature. But nonetheless, some organizations will hold prospects in the minor league system until their late 20s, and progression can happen until their low 30s and, and around there, and, and progression can be extended within Major League Baseball. It's different from my understanding, and you guys can certainly leave your comments down in the comments section below, especially for some of you that are more knowledgeable about the actual real-life baseball side of things, that it's not quite comparable to a, a sport like the NFL, where it is much more more athletic driven at a certain point your body slows down and really it's a speed driven and athletic driven game in comparison to the MLB where it's not necessarily driven based on your speed and how fast you are yes some certain positions are going to be more dependent on that than others but you don't need to have speed to be a good pitcher for example you don't have to have speed and athleticism to be a good first baseman or a good third baseman or a good DH sometimes those batting skills will stick with you for a very long time and you can be an expert hitter an expert home run hitter you can have a lot of power regardless of what your age is and those things will stick with you and I'm not saying that that's not difficult to maintain it is a very much a intricate skill set and a different skill set I, I want to make that clear I'm not certainly saying that these players aren't athletes in any way shape or form it's just a different skill set that a lot of times is conducive to players playing into their later 30s and even into their 40s and for a longer time generally than they can play in certain sports like the NFL. And so really what I want to look at today more so than anything is I want to look at the actual roster that I have within my franchise. I've gone ahead and simulated all the way into August of this franchise so that we can get a look at some players within the league to see how their progression is doing, to see how players might be falling off. One of the first things that we have to note is that players that are older within the league that have A potential or B potential are going to hang around for significantly longer. We can see Paul Goldschmidt, for example, here is an 84 overall, A potential, 35 years old. And so we can go ahead and take a look at the Cardinals here, for example, who have players that are on the borderline of 30 years old, and we'll look at other teams as well. But Giovanni Gallegos, I believe is how you say his name, I could be wrong, is getting a couple of negatives, and he's at the age of 31. He's playing really well, though, so sometimes that performance will counteract the uh, negatives that you might be getting to uh, a player in terms of their regression. We're also getting some significant negatives to Nolan Arenado, who is getting more negatives, as you can see on the screen, than positives at the age of 31 as well. So really, what it comes down to is in the game of MLB, you're going to see significant 
negatives to players coming around the age of 30. As soon as you hit the age of 30, your progression phase is pretty much over. Now, what I will say is that ultimately, your players are always going to be trying to reach their exact potential number. So if we go in to edit a player and we take a look at their attributes, we can see that Mookie Betts's attribute for potential is set to a 93. So ultimately, by the time a player hits the age of 30, they're trying to get that player in the game. The way that the system works, they're trying to get that player up to that 93 overall rating. And we can see that right here in the prime of Mookie Betts's career at the age of 30, he is hitting that 93 overall. In fact, there's nothing about his performance that says he shouldn't necessarily be over that 93 overall. He's batting 268, which is pretty solid. It's not the best ever, but he has 21 home runs, which is pretty phenomenal. He has 12 steals, which is really good. He's got a lot of runs, a lot of RBIs. So he's doing well as a player, and I'm sure he's doing well as a defensive player as well, considering his fielding ability. So ultimately, we should be seeing this player potentially going beyond that 93 rating but maybe he's not necessarily the perfect example because he is injured right now so let's go ahead and find somebody else to look at as well to compare against I was going to go ahead and take a look at Manny Machado but I can see that his performance is not necessarily doing the best right now he's a 94 overall at 30 years old and when we click into him you can see he is getting a large amount of negatives so that's negatively affecting his overall his rating all those types of things and we know that he has a very very high potential rating. So we look at 95. So again, a little bit different than what we saw with Mookie Betts, where he was at his potential rating. Now Machado is being brought down below his potential rating, and he is 30 years old. But a better example here would be Carlos Rodon, who is actually playing really well for the Giants right now. He's a 90 overall, 30 years old, with a 296 ERA, which is very, very good. Now his win-loss, not necessarily the best, so maybe I haven't found the, the, the perfect example yet. But when we take a look at him, he is also getting a significant number of negatives to his player ratings and therefore regressing a little bit. So we have to consider that at the age of 30 is really when we start to see regression hit. Now at the age of 29 is where you're going to start to see a mixed bag from my experience. And you'll see probably more progression at the age of 29 than regression. And that's also going to combine with the players overall. So if they're a 79 and their potential is a 79, that's going to play out differently than a player like Edwin Diaz, who's an 88, and his potential is in the 90s because he has A. So he might be getting a little bit more progression to try to get him up to that actual development number that they're aiming for within the game. So keep that in mind that essentially the way that it works within this game is that progression does end at the age of 29. That's your last year to technically progress a player. Now that's not to say that a player can't do well enough to get their rating up in a future year beyond the age of 29 whenever they hit that 30 year mark it is possible within the game for a player that is 30 plus years old to increase their rating it does happen especially in those younger 30s but what I want you guys to understand is that every year past 30, you're going to experience more and more and more regression to your players. It does not necessarily accurately reflect real life all that well because your players are going to regress faster generally within franchise mode than they actually would in real life from my understanding. A lot of these older A potential guys are going to drop in ratings significantly faster than you might see them drop in performance in real life. One of the things to note here, though, is a lot of these players will then stagnate in the low to mid 80s and hang out around there. We had taken a look earlier at Paul Goldschmidt, for example, who is now 35 years old, but hanging out around that 84 overall range. But more often than not, what you're going to see whenever you hit that 30 years of age is someone like Luis Castillo, who has a really good record, 12 and 6, a 3-2 ERA, very solid, 30 years old, 81 overall, B potential, unfortunately getting a mixed bag here a couple of positives probably based off of his performance and more negatives across the board but it's a mixed bag nonetheless so when you're playing your franchise modes you really want to know that 
it's not necessarily going to reflect real life as well as we might like it to. And there's two ways around that. Number one, you try to keep your team young as often and as much as possible. And that's really the strategy that I go with. I try to kind of deal away players that are in those 80 overall range or, or maybe uh, 30 plus years old that are potentially going to hit regression. I try to deal them away to teams that can utilize them for a win now type of scenario. And I try to bring in younger players that I can utilize and grow for a longer period of time and potentially get to an even higher overall. Now, the other way around it is to manually intervene. And I know that this can potentially take a lot of work, but nonetheless, you may want to manually intervene to keep players around longer. If you had a Luis Castillo, for example, who is 12 and 6 on the season, is throwing 3-2 ERA, you might want to consider bumping his overall, bumping his potential to A so that he hangs around longer. A lot of times within this game, you'll see players start out on the game's base roster as maybe like an 85 overall player, but they have A potential even though they're 35 years old. We know that they're not going to get up to a 95 overall or whatever that potential is, but that potential is given to keep them hanging around the overall that they're already at. So that potential can kind of help counteract things naturally. So that might be one step to take without actually modifying any ratings or anything like that. But I do want to make sure that this video is out there so that we have the discussion topic and so that you guys know and so that we can discuss in the comments as well how this actually compares to real life and knowing how to manage these things things within the game because again in my personal experience and from what you'll see within the game you'll notice that players will tend to regress a little bit faster than they might actually regress within the actual sport of baseball but nonetheless I hope you guys enjoyed this video we did not get too down into the weeds we can certainly dive into this further in future content but I wanted to make sure that this was out there for you if you did enjoy this or you did find this informative leave a like down below comment and subscribe and as always I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you have a good one.